Hello everyone, a very good noon to all of you. I hope I am clearly visible and audible. Hi Sonal, good noon. So I welcome you to Baidu's Exam Trap, our MBA channel and I welcome you to this session 100 most expected testnet questions. Right, so we've had some sessions uh, on this topic. We've been through some vocabulary, grammar, reasoning questions. Some of you requested some RC questions from me. So what we've done is we've arranged the last lab to testnet for you. It kickstarts tomorrow and the very first session tomorrow is an RC passages session. Right. Hello, hello, motivational video. Hi, Naman. Hi, Sindhu. Hi, Mihir, Pranjal. A very good noon. Right, I hope all of you are doing great and all of you are preparing consistently. That is what is required for TISNET. Right, consistency and of course a bit of GK preparation. So, we are going to look at some probable questions, some expected questions. The idea is to learn some concepts through these questions, to remember some words, to learn some new words through these questions. Right, and of course, uh, what should be our approach, what should be our strategy, which questions to attempt first in the English section. We will discuss all these things as well. Right, so let's begin. Okay, so this is your first question. Now see, fill in the blanks is a question type that's very, very common in TISNET. Okay, be it in grammar, be it in vocabulary. That is why I have brought some fill in the blank questions to you. Then, of course, there are other question types also. For instance, error spotting is very common. Some sentence correction questions can appear. Synonym, antonym questions are fairly common. So we'll look at these and many more question types today. Okay. Good noon Sujata, Shilpa, hi Rahul, hello Ayush, how to improve upon it, okay, okay. Uh, so, you will have to tell me that which all areas are you uncomfortable with in the sense that which all areas you are losing marks in, right. Uh, in case let's say it's more on the grammar side, then see you yourself then have identified the problem, right. So, is it random, is it based on a specific area, if it is based on a specific area that's the easier part because now you know what you have to work on, okay. So, uh, analyze your English section well and that itself will tell you, okay, this is where I am lacking in currently. Right. It could also be a strategy based thing wherein let's say you're not allocating the right amount of time or let's say you're getting stuck in questions. Is it that problem? So you have to first identify what the problem is. Right. Okay. All right, then let's have a look at the first question, a very easy one. You can see that the words given in the options are not difficult at all. So it's a contextual question. You just have to look at the surrounding words and that will give you your answer. Yes. Tell me what the answer should be here. Just one blank. So I need a negative word. I think that much is clear to everyone. Yes, so I need a negative word and that is why option D is eliminated right away. We can eliminate option D right away. Augment is to enhance something, to improve something, to increase something. These are the synonyms, right? So that is not the idea that I want to convey here. It will decrease its credibility. That's the idea that I want to convey, right? Because we are raising questions over its abilities. So erode, erase, eradicate. Can I use eradicate here? Those who are saying C, can I use eradicate? We eradi eradicate is to remove something completely, to uh, you know eliminate something completely, even destroy, even uh, uh, so if I use it for a disease, if I say that okay uh, smallpox has been eradicated, right? That means it no longer exists. So, I am trying to say that it will decrease its credibility, not completely eliminate that credibility, destroy that credibility. Therefore, erase, eradicate, both are eliminated and erode. Erode means when you know soil erodes, it doesn't completely disappear. It just decreases in its amount, in its quantum. So, this is the word that I am looking for and not B and C. Good. Annihilate is a synonym of eradicate. Yes, correct, correct. Jad se ukharna, correct. That is eradicate. Good. 
So I hope this is clear. Most of you were confused between A and C. A is the better choice, right? It was all a matter of context and we were not talking about the send the words here were not so extreme as to remove something completely right hence a okay next question two blanks this time let's see what you say again not very difficult words So pay attention to the context. I think two options can be straight away eliminated in this. Yes, can we? B is what I've got. A, all right. Some A's also, but mostly B's. Okay. Good. Those who are saying B, that is the correct answer. Now here, uh, a and C should have been eliminated right away. See, if there were strong, supportive infrastructure for women, then they would not be forced to choose between career and some other responsibilities, let's say. Right. That means this is absent. This is lacking. So, presence, backing, these are positive words. They cannot come here. So, logically speaking, A and C eliminated. Between B and C, D. Lack and paucity both fit. Right. Now, familial versus familiar, common confusables. Right. So, familial related to family. Familiar, something that you are acquainted with, something that's not foreign to you, strange to you. That is familiar. So, career. So, we are talking about two types of responsibilities here. It has to be career and familial responsibilities. A very easy question, this one. Hence, B Bangalore. Good. Most of you are correct. Perfect. So, these were two vocabulary based fill in the blank questions and you saw that it was all about context, not really about difficult words. Okay. Odd word out here. Tell me, what is the odd word out? So, I have created this question for you because I wanted you to understand a few words in depth. Okay. List down test net, grammar important topics. Okay, sure, Kostab, I'll do that. A happy Valentine's Day to all of you. C, D, all right. C is what I'm getting, okay. M enable. All right, D. So it's C versus D in the chat box. Others, what do you say? A, all right. So mostly C's and D's and uh, I've got, I think, one A. The answer is D, M enable, right? These mean something friendly or pleasant. Whereas M enable means somebody who's very, uh, you know, susceptible to something or a very compliant, pliant person. Okay. Someone who will obey you very easily. Okay. So M enable children. M enable children are very pliant children. They obey you easily. They listen to you. They act as you say. Right. Then also it means susceptible or vulnerable. So, those are the meanings and they are not really associated directly with friendliness, right? So, that's why A, B and C belong to one group whereas D does not belong to that group of friendliness and pleasantness. Now, if I go into the depth of these words, there, there are subtle differences here between these two. Let's understand that also. It will be very handy when you use these words because what I've seen is that students know the meanings of these two words but then they use them incorrectly. So, affable. She is an affable person. She is a friendly person. Amiable is a synonym. So, amiable, affable, usually used for people, usually used for people 
okay so friendly is the meaning amicable on the other hand is usually used for situations you don't use it for people remember this you don't use amicable for people okay you can't say she is an amicable person no amicable is used for a situation so for instance it was an amicable divorce that means there was no unpleasantness in the divorce so they were on friendly terms even afterwards so amicable divorce amicable breakup okay uh, my employer and i share an amicable relationship so used for situations relationships amicable okay also uh, if you notice the situations in which i used it for instance divorce breakup they indicate those situation situations in which usually you know there would be some sort of a uh, discord okay some sort of a lack of harmony that would be there so used for usually unpleasant situations to indicate the lack of unpleasantness to indicate that okay things were carried out peacefully so i hope now you'll remember when to use amicable when to use amiable these are common confusables can appear in your exam as fill in the blanks also amenable on the other hand is pliant susceptible not i wrote perceptible here uh, i meant vulnerable not perceptible i don't know how i wrote it okay uh, the mind does crazy things right uh, and of course you've realized when to use amiable when to use amicable one for people one for situations okay so let's move ahead with this understanding and i hope you'll remember these words now again identify the odd word out here i think two or three word, words here are familiar to you yes so i've got c okay just a second no i've not got any response for this a i use says a cost up d naman a aladdin d okay so it's a versus d i can sense that but i am getting more of a's now all right others what does it mean to abhor something she abhors this idea okay that means she hates this idea so somebody who is abhorred is hated okay abominable again detestable something that someone whom you find extremely unpleasant would be abominable for you you would hate this person execrable what is execrable yes an execrable situation again an extremely bad and unpleasant situation something that is again detestable that would be an execrable situation for you okay so abhorred execrable abominable they all belong to the category when you detest something when you hate something or someone right whereas endurable is something that you can tolerate right endurable is tolerable you still find it tolerable so you get it that the answer is d delhi a is not the answer all right so d is the answer here good some of you identified this correctly odd word out questions again in the tisnet indicative syllabus that has been given to us odd word out analogy questions have been written as part of it that's why we are practicing them okay a usual antonym question yes let's see what you say find the opposite okay to flay someone what does it mean to flay someone is it a good thing no to flay someone literally means 
to remove the skin of someone okay it's used in two contexts so one is that you remove the skin of a corpse okay or an animal's carcass so one is that sense the other is that you beat someone so much that their skin comes out that is to flay someone right so peel is a related idea scalping again is a related idea scalp again means to remove the hair from to remove the skin from right also flay is used in the sense of scolding also right so uh, in fact think of this no when would you beat someone so much perhaps when they've done something wrong something that you feel is wrong right so uh, when you are uh, be, uh, when you think uh, that someone has done wrong right so you treat them harshly so in a metaphorical sense it is also used to criticize someone harshly it does it is not always used in a literal sense in a literal sense it is related to removing the skin but it is also related to criticizing someone harshly in a metaphorical sense that's when you flay them okay so abraid also is used in that sense it means to scold abraid means to scold right so flay scalp peel upbraid similar ideas and therefore none of them are the odd one out the answer is the answer is sheath when you sheath something you cover it okay so when you sheath we wanted the antonym remember i asked you what is the antonym here these are synonymous ideas so sheath is to cover okay and you know removing is the opposite idea so d delhi is the answer get it everyone good a couple of you who said d mostly i see b's and c's here no okay so a chance to redeem yourself another antonym question tell me okay so what is the difference between this question and the previous one the difference is in how you attempt the question right so for instance in the previous question yes radhika they are also helpful for cmat because again cmat also asks vocabulary and grammar both in a good number right in the previous question uh, we followed grouping and elimination so i grouped these words that okay these are similar ideas okay they cannot be the answers i am looking for an opposite idea now in this question you can't apply that because uh, famine is not at all related to brusk it is in no way related to brusk brusk is again when you know you are very blunt in the way you talk you are very off handed very abrupt in your manner that is when you are brusk now famine on the other hand is shortage of food right so it's not related at all to brusque so that's the first uh, clue you know c is the first one that you eliminate now chivalrous is something that's it's it's a common word so you know the meaning chivalrous is respectful right usually used in the context of being respectful towards women so chivalrous looks like an opposite idea okay now in case you even have a rough idea of captious and burly you can eliminate these also and that is how you arrive at the answer here not through grouping and elimination as such right captious who is a captious person cet yes 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 see vocabulary grammar these are common elements for all your non cat exams out there right so for the cmat exam for the upcoming mhc et exam these are useful okay just that mhct has five options instead of four okay so a is the answer here you're absolutely right but my question is what is the meaning of captious yes who will tell me quickly quickly chivalry is a noun right it's the name of a thing that you display so he displayed chivalry he exhibited chivalry okay then chivalrous he was chivalrous so 
it is describing him we are using chivalrous as an adjective so chivalrous is an adjective chivalry is a noun captious is not captivating no captious means somebody who fights often okay and that one petty things so somebody who finds faults fights on petty things that person is captious a related word that you may have heard is cavilling okay finds petty faults fights on trivial matters that person is captious okay burly if i call someone burly that means that person is heavily built heavily built that person is burly so you can use it for um, khali yeah his name is okay so you can form a visual association of burly with khali and that's how you'll remember the word right hope this makes sense to you you learned a word captious today you perhaps knew the meaning of brusque chivalrous is the opposite idea burly means heavily built so we've created a visual association there right okay moving on to an analogy question this is yes belligerent is a synonym it's a similar word correct motivational video of captious analogy question very easy a general knowledge question stallion is to mare so a stallion is a male horse whereas a mare so part uh, we are yet to plan the cmat sessions but yes critical reasoning sessions are going to happen for cmat okay d versus c but mostly d's i have got stallion is a male horse mare is a female horse so that was the relationship here and you have to always you know usually you have to go for a similar relationship very rarely have i seen an analogy question where they ask you that which is the most dissimilar from the given relationship the meaning of analogy is actually to find similarities right so male horse female horse male and female bull is to cow right so that's why d is the answer child is to girl no okay girl child would be a type of child in case i'm i was going for that connection a bird lays egg but it doesn't have the masculine feminine relationship sheep the young one of a sheep is called lamb not the masculine feminine relationship again right so this is the answer here stallion is to mare right so based on general knowledge you can sense that one word substitution anything that makes one feel encouraged eliminate two options can be easily eliminated let's see what you have said abomination is a noun okay so if someone is an abomination to you or an act is an abomination to you right then you abhor it so abhor is a verb right so we the parts of speech are different there the meanings are very similar right good most of you are correct so ab very easily eliminated it join means okay joining room is the next room intention we know the meaning so they don't fit at all light what is the meaning of this word light yes sure kostav just let me come to the grammar portion a couple of questions later we'll come to grammar itself so that's when i'll list it so if i call someone light i mean that they are thin and graceful okay so slender is a synonym supple is also a synonym because uh, the idea is also to indicate flexibility here so light 
slender, thin and graceful. Okay. It's not lazy. That is, uh, I think you are confusing it with sloth. Okay. So, if someone exhibits the quality of sloth, that means that person is lady, lazy. Okay. So, life is different. All right. So, coming to our next word. Philip now, okay, how, how would I use it? It's a noun. Right. So, if I say that his kind words gave a Philip to his, uh, gave him a Philip in his difficult times. Right. So, that means they actually made him feel motivated. His kind words. So, Philip is a noun. You use it in that way. Okay. Now, let's come to grammar. And before we begin with this question, uh, a list of the topics that you must prepare in grammar. Right. See, as per again your indicative syllabus, Tisnet has just written this broad heading grammar. Okay. Has listed, the, has listed this as an item. The question types that you get, I have already told you, error spotting, fill in the blank sentence correction. These are the usual question types that you get. But what all concepts do you need to prepare for? See, very important that you're clear with your parts of speech. After all, all these errors that we deal with, what are these? These are errors in some or the other part of speech. Okay, that okay, an adjective has not been used correctly, a noun has not been used correctly. So, you should be thorough with all the parts of speech. Right. Second kind of errors that are very popular are your subject verb agreement errors that the subject does not agree with the verb right so if the subject is singular for instance in the third person then the verb also has to be singular he says not he say so subject verb agreement errors okay the more advanced type of errors something that you may not have studied in your junior classes are modifiers and parallelism errors right so what is there in this modifiers and parallelism? The incorrect usage of adjective and adverb phrases. Right. Parallelism, not keeping your sentences consistent. Okay. So, if at one place I am using the past tense and at another place I am unnecessarily using the present tense. Okay. Uh, without any context, then that is a parallelism error. So, inconsistency in your sentences. So, parts of speech. And when I say parts of speech, this includes all parts of speech. This also includes articles. In case you are wondering where do articles fall, I am including them for your preparation purposes in parts of speech. Okay. Subject verb agreement, modifiers and parallelism. These areas you should be thorough with. Okay. And again, when I say parts of speech, verbs comes in it. So, tenses also comes in it. So, it is a very comprehensive preparation of parts of speech that I am talking to you about. Make sense? What all you have to prepare for? Okay. So now, uh, let's see an error spotting question. I think some of you have already answered it. And I remember in a previous session on Tisnet itself, we did this fill in the blank, cured off uh, a disease, I think. It was a disease. And we had to put the correct preposition there. So, I told you that after cured, we put the preposition off. She was cured of cancer. So, prepositions have this fixed usage at times that, okay, after a certain verb, we can place a certain preposition only or before a certain noun, we can place a certain preposition only. So, arguing with her, tired from, arguing with her boss is an incorrect expression. So, you are tired of arguing, tired of something not from something. So, just like after cured we use off, after tired also we use off, right? And that's why B Bangalore is the erroneous part. Hope this makes sense, everyone. And most of you would mark this correctly. Now, my, <clears throat> what is the reason behind including this question? Again, in the previous session in the comment box, I saw that some of you were confused with hypothetical conditionals. So, through this question, I want to discuss them. Let's go. First answer, then we'll discuss.
Okay. So I've got C here. All right. Absolutely correct. C is the answer. Now, uh, the question that I took up in that session was this. Let me write it here. Now, I'm writing the correct sentence. If he were here, if he were here, this would not happen. This disaster, in fact, that was the sentence. This disaster would not happen. Now, some of you asked this question in the comment box that why is it would not happen? And why did we not write would not have happened? So, let me clarify that to you. In both these sentences, in both these sentences, we are talking about a hypothetical scenario. What are we talking about? A hypothetical scenario. Why is it hypothetical? Because currently he is not here. Currently he is not here. I am imagining. Agar wo hota to kya hota. Right? So, this is a hypothetical scenario that I am describing to you. Similarly, currently, I mean, I did not know the recipe. Mujhe recipe nahi pata thi. Agar mujhe pata hoti, to fir mein bana deti pineapple cake. So, I did not know the recipe. This person is not here. Do you notice how I am phrasing it? Phrasing this. This person is not here. So, this is something that is untrue in the present. Wo abhi is time. At present yaha nahi hai. Ye present ki situation hai ek. Okay. So, if currently someone is absent, you will use this structure. If he were here, this would not happen. If he were here, this would not happen. Okay. On the other hand, this describes a situation of the past. Let's say uh, we are talking about the last year. So, on your anniversary, okay, let's take an example. On your anniversary, last year, this happened that you wanted a pineapple cake. But I did not know how to make a pineapple cake. I did not know the recipe. So, I did not make it for you then. So, we are talking about a situation of the past. And back then, I did not know how to make a pineapple cake. You get it? So, that's the difference. So, when something is untrue in the present, you have to use the verb would structure. You cannot use the would have structure here. Okay. And when we are talking about a past situation, that is when you use the had and would have structure. That is why you can't use it here. So, had, would have is kill reserved hai, untrue in the past kill. Okay. Instead of had I, you can also write if I had known. If I had is equally correct instead of had I. Hope this makes perfect sense to you now, right? And you'll not get confused. Okay then. Let's see another question where again we have a had concept. Again, I included this because I want to clarify all the queries related to had, would have today. Okay. Yes. Okay, all right. So I've got two responses. No, I've got many responses. Okay. Aladdin says D. So Aladdin, why D? So this one is a tricky question. It's meant to confuse you. Now, the moment we see two hads, we, we automatically get uncomfortable. Yes, and we feel, ye, ye galat hoga. Isi mein error hai. Right? However, this is a, this, this part, this fragment is a correct fragment. The error is indeed in D. Okay, the should not come here. The should not come here. What do you usually, when we talk about our meals in a usual sense, we say, okay, I have had lunch. I have eaten my lunch. Do we say I have had the lunch? I have eaten the lunch. No. 
okay if you're let's say uh, your parent calls you uh, calls you up from a distance okay so he or she would say uh, please have dinner okay or come here have dinner right have the dinner to koi nahi bolta yes so when we talk about our meals in a usual sense lunch dinner they do not need any article before them right so you have dinner you you don't have the dinner or a dinner right this was the error so how is this correct when can we use these two hads okay so we need to understand the verb to have here so to jahan pe jo verb use ho raha hai na wo hai to have right like to eat is a verb to have is also a verb however this is more comprehensive in the sense that to have can be used as a helping verb also hum ise kisi aur verb ki help ke liye bhi use kar sakte hain and it can be used as a main verb also that's how it is different so when do we use it as a helping verb i have i have uh, jumped thrice today okay i have jumped thrice so main action that happened is jumping have is just to tell you ki mai kar chuki this action has already happened it has finished so this have is simply helping you to understand the time frame okay in a much better way so it's helping jump in that way so this is the helping verb usage when do we use it as a main verb okay main verb mein kab use karte hain have ko had usi ka form hai na see have is the present tense had is the present uh, the past simple and also the past participle which is called the third form of the verb the past participle theek hai to pehle have ko samajh lete hain main verb okay so oh i am having a good time when you say you are having a good time right there is no other verb in the sentence i am having a good time no other verb here it's a main verb so to have means as a main verb it means to experience you are having a great time you are experiencing a great time i have a car when i say i have a car so i own a car that's what i mean so as a main verb it also means to own i am having lunch no other verb as in that sense it means to eat so as the main verb it can mean these things to own possess eat experience right so this second had here means eaten okay so i could not meet him in the morning so i decided to see him when after i had finished after i had eaten my dinner so just look at this part look at this part two actions happened in the past okay first second they happened in the past in a sequence okay so one was the action of meeting him to see him the other was the action of eating this one happened first eating happened first and it got completed before the second one started it got completed before the second one started so when we want to describe such a sequence where two actions happen in the past in a sequence one before the other okay and the first one gets completed either before or by the time the second one starts then with this first action i have to put a had past perfect tense ka rule hai ye what is this the rule of the past perfect tense so i had this had represents that okay past perfect hai and this represents eaten i had eaten the dinner clear hope this makes sense i understand that naman uncomfortable sa lagta hai awkward construction lagta hai but it's a correct construction grammatically right no motivational video a good question we cannot say i am having a car that's incorrect or i i am having an experience of 7 years no i have work experience of 7 years i have a car right we can't use it in the continuous sense in the when we talk about owning or possessing something we use the dinner vicky no uh you know when you ask someone on a date you say oh, let's have dinner together yes would you like to go to dinner with me but in case let's say you are sitting at the restaurant uh 
and uh, let's say you like you let's say you went to a very fancy restaurant you like that particular meal there now you are describing it later to your friend so you will say the dinner that i had at cafeberry let's say that's the name of the cafe the dinner that i had at cafeberry was amazing so now you are using the because you are talking about a specific meal the one that you had at cafeberry that's why the dinner that i had at cafeberry you get it otherwise in a usual sense you don't even when you are on a date okay don't make grammatical mistakes on a date okay if the dinner is king size got have accepted so then you would say the dinner with a specific focus on the okay this is the dinner that means okay i am emphasizing how great it is how amazing it is usually used in spoken english right okay i hope now things are crystal clear to you and we can go to the next question now you know when we use the had would have structure were would structure and also when we use these two hads with this understanding let's see this question uh, okay sorry something this had to start yeah it has started All right. Great, Yashi. D C. All right. It's C versus D. I am sure a lot of us have realized this that it's C versus D. B. Okay. All right. Now see. abstract nouns happiness is an abstract noun yes it's a feeling it's an emotion that you experience now um i am so in let, let's say in a general sense um, if i say happiness true happiness is rare true happiness is rare or happiness is an elusive emotion or feeling is an elusive feeling right something that eludes a lot of people escapes a lot of people so in a general sense when we talk about abstract nouns we do not put any article before them so see the concept that is being tested here is that of articles so uh, in a general sense sorrow happiness when you talk about them no the required however we are talking about a specific moment of happiness here not the feeling in general the specific moment here is her experience on going to her dream b school right the feelings that she had when she went to her dream b school so in this case we need the before it so remember the dinner i had at cafeberry so ek specific dinner ki baat ho rahi thi udhar similarly the happiness she experienced the happiness she experienced on going to her dream b school was unparalleled to go to her dream b school is an incorrect structure can anybody tell me why it indicates something that's going to happen in the future so, uh, it indicates purpose okay so she wants to go to her dream b school that is fine okay she experienced to go to no she experienced on doing something so on going to her dream b school that's why c good those who said c all right then let's go to the next question hope this is clear in general with abstract nouns no the but when we are talking about a specific moment a specific experience then yes uh, when we have this structure of the happiness and i describe that happiness that moment there then you have to put the all right the good old error spotting questions are back let's see what you say here so a lot of happiness in these questions
this will also test whether you understood the previous question or not. C, D. Yes, motivational video we can. So the happiness that she experienced is fine. Okay, but we can skip the that there. That's why, that's why, you know, C was our correct answer. Whenever we have a personal pronoun after that, we can skip that. So the happiness that she, because she is a personal pronoun, I can skip the that there and I can simply say the happiness she experienced. Okay, but uh, it's okay to, when, when I'm talking about a specific moment of sorrow or a specific moment of happiness, we can use that after it. No problem there. B versus C. Okay, but the answer is D. No error here. Okay, let's see. This happiness has arrived. So, this happiness, again, I'm talking about a specific moment of happiness. Ye jo khushi aai hai, right? That's the idea. Ki ye jo khushi aai hai. This happiness has arrived after many a difficulty. Now, I understand, you know, why this is challenging for you. But this is something that is a part of rules of subject verb agreement. The rules of subject verb agreement, uh, they talk about the difference between many with a plural noun, so many difficulties versus this structure, many a uh, with a singular noun, many a uh, difficulty. So many times, many times, many a uh, time. I think this is the most common usage of this structure that you may have seen. Some of you may also have seen many a uh, times, many a uh, times, but that is informal and incorrect in written English, right? So don't use this. Many times all of us understand, many difficulties all of us understand. This is the standard usage, right? But a lot of us think that this is incorrect. No, this is also correct. And they mean the app, they mean absolutely the same thing. Same cheese hai. Ye bas fancy hai. This is just a little fancy. That's the only difference. It's more literary, more fancy, uh, fancier. That's, that's what I should say. It is fancier, right? So same hai meaning wise. But the difference is for grammar, grammatical implications. When we say many a, uh, I can't say difficulties. When, has, when I say many a, uh, I can't say times. It has to be time, right? So after many a uh, difficulty. So no error here. D is the answer. Great many difficulties. You can say that great many difficulties. That's just you emphasizing that, okay, there were quite a few difficulties there. Right, great many difficulties is also fine. But that, that's not an error as such, okay? This is just you adding great before many. But you can't say great many after great many a difficulty. That would be incorrect, okay? So remember this and that's why, you know, you should go through the rules. There are some 14, 15 rules in subject verb agreement and after that the topic will be crystal clear to you, okay? Let's see this one in the spirit of Valentine's Day. Yes. Okay, what do you say? Easy, right? I love her more than any girl on the planet would include her also. Right? So, this does not make sense. I love her more than any other girl. Any other girl. So, C is the erroneous part. C is the erroneous part. Subject verb agreement, uh, I haven't taken any specific class on this concept, but yes, in a lot of grammar sessions, I keep covering this, the concepts, the rules of subject verb agreement, right? So, uh, usually our sessions on YouTube, they are driven more by the errors that you may get in the exams. So, I cover a number of topics there, including subject verb agreement. Specific session, I don't think I've taken on it. Okay. All right, then. So, C is the answer here. Good. Any other girl hona chahiye because I am excluding her, of course. Now, 
fill in the blanks. Let's see. We'll try, we'll try. Yes, on the planet, the planet, basically I'm referring to the earth here. That's why the planet, I'm talking about a specific planet, vampire. Okay. Okay, I'll request my team definitely about a session on subject verb agreement. So, A is what you are saying, quite a few of you. The, this question is basically to make you understand the difference between less and lesser. That was my intention. Now, you're saying although this project offers a lot of money, it is still, it is still dash of the two evils. See, when do we use this idiom? This is an idiom, the lesser of the two evils the lesser of the two evils so first of all it is the lesser the lesser of the two evils when i'm you know when i'm facing two difficult choices you know both are bad choices but i am choosing the one that is less bad that's when i use this idiom the lesser of the two evils so first of all let's eliminate these two okay now between a and b if the project offered a lot of money then would you use the contrast word although? Right. When do you use although? See, although paise kam mil rahe hai, par vaise project, you know, dono bure projects mein se ye wala kam bura hai. Although isme paise kam mil rahe hai, par ye kam bura hai. That's when you'll use this contrast, no? If it is offering you a lot of money, if it is already offering you a lot of money, then you'll not use the still and although structure with it. Right. So, A is eliminated logically speaking it does not fit with it okay so if i so if i say uh you know when could i use this mm. yes so although this project involves um less learning it offers a lot of money right so in that case now i am i am now giving the drawback here the drawback is less learning but the upside is a lot of money. So, this is the upside. Okay. This is the upside here. You have to say that, okay, theek hai, kam paise mil rahe hai, but still project dono mein se, ye kam bura wala project hai. The lesser. Hope I'm making sense. A lot of versus a lot of. Motivational video, there is nothing called a lot of. A lot of is incorrect usage. Okay. A lot of. Now, you probably wanted to ask lots of, right? A is not used here. But even lots of is informal usage. So, when we say lots of love, that is something that's acceptable in informal English. That's what I want to say. Okay, in spoken English, lots of love is fine. Otherwise, in written English, it should be a lot of love. All right? Okay. So, uh, I hope this is clear. We will use less money here. Why less? Because I am comparing the money that both the projects offer, right? So, this one offers me less. So, comparison is happening. Comparison is of quantity. Money ki to quantity compare karenge na. So, the comparison is a quantity comparison. This is a quality comparison and that's why I can't use less here. I will have to use lesser. Also, the idiom is the lesser of the two evils. Hence, this. Sorry. Hmm. Nay, sorry. B tha. Okay, you confused me also. B is the answer. Perfect. So, I have are all the questions that we've discussed today clear to you? Any queries, please ask. Okay, in grammar particularly, if there are any queries, you can ask me. All right. Chalo. Um, 
this is our new batch for cat 23 in case you or any of your friends are thinking about cat 23 i would say that now is the time to enroll because you need some months for preparation also okay and there is a lot to prepare for actually there's a lot of stuff that we are offering you and you need time to go through all this material to go through all the lectures and that's why you should enroll right now the link is in the description box for making these course, this particular course accessible, we also have a scholarship test through which you can get a scholarship up to a 90% scholarship. This will happen on the 18th of Feb at 7 p.m. You can register for it now. There are limited seats, so you have to register. The link is again in the description box, right? And this one is already, no, this one is today. Okay, 14th is today, yes. So at 7 p.m. we have a workshop today, how to get 99 percentile in CAT 2023. This is mainly a strategy oriented workshop that what should be your strategy, how you should attempt various sections, okay, so that you can reach that 99 percentile. Again, you have to register for it first. So you can do that through the link in the description box. Okay, sorry. And from tomorrow, something that's very, very relevant for all of you, uh, the last lab to TISNET is going to start from tomorrow. We will revise various topics in eight days. So tomorrow at 8 p.m., you'll see us with the first session, which is an RC passage session, right? Something that all of you have been asking for. And uh, daily then, you know, from then on, daily we'll meet you for eight days and we'll cover various topics with you, right? I'll see you on the 16th with some vocabulary words. Okay, this is the All India Open Mock and this has been going on for some time now. Today is the 14th, so I would suggest that do take it at the earliest, right? So that uh, you know where you stand, what all you need to prepare for it for MHCT. And do stay connected. Okay, yes, sure. Amit, Rishika, noted, noted. Welcome guys, welcome. How to increase your score in English in the mock? I stated this in the beginning of the uh, lesson, in the beginning of this lecture also, that first you have to identify where is it that you're not scoring. Okay, if it is mainly RC passages, then that's the area that you need to focus on. If it's mainly vocabulary, that means that you need to add more words to your pool. You need to practice vocabulary questions at this stage. So, see that where is it that, you know, you are not scoring. That's the first step to addressing the problem, right? Two to three questions, okay. How can I improve? So, I use high frequency words. That should be your mantra. Because if you open your previous year TISNET papers, you'll realize that they don't ask any esoteric words, any archaic words. Uh, easy, easy words, poochte, right? So, high frequency words, I have told you that you can find these high frequency words uh, in, there are a lot of lists also in the market. There is word par made easy. So, I'll suggest all of these to you. You can choose whichever you can complete in these days. Word Par Made Easy is a book. Then Barron's 800 is a word list. Again, it has high frequency word. words. In case you have the NMAT official guide. NMAT official guide also has its own word list. So I would say that you go for that one instead of let's say the Barron's 800. And apart from this, I have told you that you should practice vocabulary questions. So Baiju's exam prep app, if you open it, it has some vocabulary tests, which are, which of course has questions on vocabulary. Go through those questions, right? That would be my suggestion. Previous year uh, questions of all the non-CAT exams will help you here. Uh, in 10 days, I think uh, you can go through the word list at least. 800 words ka word list you can go through. Why? Because when you start doing it, no, you realize that you already know at least 400 out of them. These are high frequency words. Right. So that comes down to not, let's say, 80 a day, it comes down to 40 a day. Right. So you can try completing this list and Matt or Barron's list. Right. And practice questions. I think that's the best approach to learning vocabulary, to preparing for vocabulary questions for your management entrance tests. Okay, stay connected. Hope you've subscribed to the channel. Hope you've been logging into the app and uh, seeing various sessions that we've been conducting. Right. And yes, thank you for attending. I'll see you again. And yes, uh, do we use a lot, lot of comparison with quantity or quality? A lot of. Um, we can use it for both actually, a lot of. Okay, so he has a lot of money. Here I'm talking about the quantity of money, right? Uh, that must have taken a lot of guts. So here I am... So, talking in a sort of a metaphorical sense, right? 
you can't you usually don't have the have a quantity of guts as such right so quality quantity dono ka comparison aa sakta hai all right welcome then bye bye see you